All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. We have one presentation today, and um, but after the presentation, the University IACUC representative will be joining us to tell us about policies and procedures and things like that. So at about uh, 1025, 1030, we'll transition from presentations to uh, policy and procedures. Um, today's presentation is by Jennifer Lutz. Uh, Jennifer comes to us with a bachelor's from University of Alaska Fairbanks, so she too has spent some time in the far north. Um, Jennifer is going to be talking with us about um, winter patch grazing systems and bird communities in western South Dakota, and this is her uh, master's proposal seminar. So, with that, welcome. As he said, my name is Jennifer Lutz. Um, I'm actually co-advised by Dr. Pat Johnson and Dr. Casey Jensen, and my project is on winter patch grazing systems and bird communities in West western South Dakota. Historically, the Great Plains has evolved through grazing of large herbivores and, and fire into a mosaic of habitat types. The bison grazing patterns were determined by vegetation changes which were determined by uh, rainfall and fire, ultimately utilizing large areas of these landscapes, uh, increasing the heterogeneity over these plains. Over time, the Great Plains has drastically changed through current fire suppression and replacing free roaming bison into uh, fenced in domestic livestock pastures. Suppressing fires in area that have evolved to include fire reduces forage yield due to increased plant competition and increases the possibility of having a catastrophic wildfire if one should arise. Contemporary grazing strategies are designed for pastures to be grazed uniformly, creating more homogeneous landscape. Due to the switch in grazing regime from end fire suppression, rangelands have lost their heterogeneous patchy character and become more homogeneous consequently making them more ecologically unstable. These patchy areas were also very important to wildlife, especially um, the bird nesting species. According to the North American Breeding Bird Survey, the grassland birds have been on a consistent decline, more so than any other group of birds in North America from 1966 to 2009. Even our South Dakota Wildlife Action Plan marks the lark buntings and the chestnut-colored longspurs as species of greatest concern. So there's been some studies done with patch burning and grazing, and it's been shown to be a very successful management tool in terms of both heterogeneity and bird diversity in places such as Oklahoma and Kansas. It actually increased the bird diversity by four times the amount. However, patch burning and grazing is poorly understood in the northern Great Plains landscape. Furthermore, South Dakota ranchers are very apprehensive about using fire as a tool to create a mosaic of habitat types. This is mostly due to lack of equipment, labor, the notion that applying fire is very risky and that feed that can be used next year is ultimately being wasted. Therefore, there is a need to mimic the benefits that um, a landscape that is evolved with fire presents without having to sacrifice livestock productivity. And uh, this will require an increased stu structural heterogeneity, um, which takes habitats ranging from short to tall structure, and in turn that will create the diverse habitat types necessary for robust avian community structure. So my project actually focuses on two scales or intensities. Uh, the first scale is intensive and that's going to be done at the SDSU Cottonwood Range and Livestock Field Station which is denoted by the pink star. And past studies here at SDSU have concluded that there's no statistical difference um, in livestock productivity with uh, this patch grazing study in terms of small scale pastures. Therefore, there's a need to implement this into more um, production scale pastures. 
And with that, we actually have two cooperator ranches, and one of them is the Kamak Ranch, which is uh, located in Union Center, which is that star, and the Dow Ranch, which is located in Midland, South Dakota, which is that other orange star. So our first scale, the intensive scale, is at the SDSU Cottonwood Field Station, like I said. We actually have four control pastures and four treatment pastures. Our treatment pastures are divided into five uh, different patches. During the winter time, during the dormant season, we're gonna go ahead and erect a temporary electric fence, and we're gonna graze it. And um, once a patch is created, we're gonna take down the electric fence so the um, cattle can have access to the entire pasture during the grazing season. Uh, we're going to go ahead and graze it the entire season with a moderate stocking rate and every year after we're going to go ahead and graze a different patch. So just to give you a visual, these are two of our control and patch pairs. Um, so for example, if we were to graze patch one, that would go ahead and be our patch area and then patches two through five would become our non-patch area for that particular year. Utilization will be determined by erecting exclusion cages. We're gonna go ahead and have four in the patch and four in the non-patch areas of our treatment pasture, and we're gonna have four in our control pasture. Standard Rowell Pole and Dobbin Meyer samples will be taken. We're gonna have five points in the patch area and 15 in the non-patch area, with 20 in our control pasture. All these points will be randomly allocated. The mean height of standing dead and current year grass will be taken to determine the similarities and differences between all of the grass types. There's gonna be five transects in each of the patch and non-patch areas of our treatment pasture, as well as five in our control pasture. At every five paces, um, a point will be taken for a total of 50 points per transect. We're gonna have satellite imagery taken in early May to evaluate the uniformity within the graze patches, as well as the differences between the graze patches, non-patch areas, and control pastures. To determine bird response, we're gonna have bird surveys conducted three times through the season and nest dragging conducted twice from late May to early July. For the bird surveys, we're gonna go ahead and walk 16-year transects at a slow pace, stopping periodically to write down all birds both seen and heard. Flyover species will be written down separately but not used in analysis. The bird surveys will not be conducted when temperatures are less than seven or over 24 degrees Celsius. There is moderate to heavy rain or heavy fog. The nest dragging will have a 30 meter nylon rope with chains attached to every five meters, drug between two people in random transects. When a bird nest is found, its, uh, G its GPS location will be logged, and the date, species, number of eggs and or young, and number of brown-headed cowbirds and or young, and the development stage of the young will be taken. These nests, will be revisited every three to four days until these nests are either deemed successful or failed. A successful nest will be if one nestling fledges the nest, and this will stay true if it's a brown-headed cowbird species. Our livestock performance will be based on weight both gained and or lost. There will be three different measurements taken for weights the beginning, the middle, and at the end when we take them off the pasture. The beginning and the end weights will be based on two consecutive weighing days. Four steers in each pasture will have a GPS collar logging not only their position, but their activity at that time. And regular visual observations will back up the collar data collected. Our water tanks are gonna be centrally located and mineral will be freely given. In terms of our cooperator ranches or our production scale, it's gonna be very similar to that at Cottonwood. For their treatment pasture, we're gonna go ahead and take 
20% of that pasture and erect a temporary electric fence and we're going to graze it with gestating beef cattle during the grass's dormant season. Once a patch is erected, we're going to go ahead and take down the electric fence and a pasture that's been in their regular rotational grazing system is going to be chosen to compare against the treatment pasture. Their stocking rates and grazing regime will be based on the rancher's normal practice. So utilization will be the same as at the Cottonwood Station. There's going to be four um, exclusion cages put in the patch and four in the non-patch areas as far as the control pastures. And um, at the end of the grazing season, the exclusion cages are going to be clipped as well as an unprotected plot nearby for total biomass. Again, the standard Robel Pole and Daubenmeyer samples will be taken five points in the patch, 15 in the non-patch, and 20 in the control pasture. Same thing, um, the height of the standing dead and current year grass is going to be taken, five transects in each, 50 points total per transect. Satellite imagery will also be taken in early May to evaluate the uniformity, not only within the grass patches, but the differences between the grazed patches, non-patch areas, and the pastures. Bird response, it's a little bit different. It's the same because we are going to conduct bird surveys three times and nest dragging twice. However, the difference is uh, checking for nest fate is going to have a longer interval than that three to four day that we saw at Conwood. So the cattle are going to be weighed every time they're either put on or taken off each pasture. Four cows in each pasture are also going to be um, are also going to have a GPS collar that uh, records their location and activity at the time, and those actually are pictures of our collars. So the bird surveys and the nest dragging will be evaluated using the distance program to determine not only the total bird density but the bird species density as well. All the weight measurements and the vegetation measurements will be evaluated using ANOVA. So some potential implications for my study are increased heterogeneity and sustainability of rangelands over both the short and the long term. Ranchers might be more willing to adopt this management regime because the feed isn't being wasted and the issues about fire are no longer there. Um, this vegetation structure might help declining bird species more successful places to nest as well. And as my mother says, if you didn't have bad luck, you wouldn't have any luck at all. We implemented this project in 2016 and we actually already had a field season this last summer and uh, a huge fire broke out in western South Dakota and hit a lot of the SDSU Cottonwood Station and actually hit a little bit of my um, project site as well. The fire is denoted by the yellow areas. Um, uh, thankfully, uh, one control and patch pair were not burned in the fire. There's the control and there's the patch um, pastures. However, that makes our other ones very different. We're going to go ahead and take out the fences that um, denote the, the, excuse me, we're going to go ahead and take out the fences so that the control and the treatment pasture become one big pasture. So we're going to take out the fences there, there, and there, create three large pastures. So each pasture is going to have a burn and an unburned area. For the unburned area, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put up a temporary electric fence this winter, and we're going to go ahead and graze it to the ground. And during the summertime, the cattle will have access to the entire pasture. And we're going to go ahead and evaluate their preference of patch, burn, or control areas through the GPS data. Thankfully, um, all my measurements for both bird and vegetation are going to be the same this summer. Um, 
the control and treatment pasture that was not burned, it's gonna go ahead and have, just go on as I just described to you earlier with a new patch being grazed this summer, as will our production ranches. And with that, I would like to thank my advisors, Dr. Casey Jensen and Dr. Pat Johnson, South Dakota State University and the Department of Natural Resource Management, my technicians, and of course my sources of funding, which are the North Central Sustainable Agricultural Research and Education Program and the South Dakota Agricultural Experiment Station. Any questions? You also said moderate stocking. So, do you know what the stocking density? Do you know what your stocking rates are? Uh, the question is, what are I'm what are sorry, your stocking rates? What are my stocking rates? Um, I don't know that either. <laughs> Offhand. Yes. Okay. So, um, just a comment. I really love that you made your own GPS colors. That's pretty Yes, actually, um, <laughs> Jamie Brennan made them. Okay. He's a PhD student out in Rapid, and yeah. I know he's that'll listening bring your, right now. That'll yeah, bring he your did a fantastic down. job. He yeah. really did, and they work so much better than the low-tech collars. He did a really good job. Cool. Um, so one of the things for you guys to consider, you probably already talked about it with your fire, just to you know bond a little bit. I had a um, a oil exploration treatment come through my PhD study right in the middle of it. If you planted the collared rabbits with the line where they did the, the um, exploration, it would have been an R squared of about 0.9. So I can sympathize. Um, it looks like you're going to have the data for a design called before after control impact that you can, it's really powerful. You can look it up. I can send you some um, references. Yeah. But it'll help you do the fire effects, and you've probably already talked about that with your advisors, but um, it's super powerful. Yeah. Well, we're just starting to talk about, basically, we figured out what we were going to do a week ago, this yeah. Friday, and so we're still trying to figure out all the details and whatnot. So. Well, even if you keep the design the way it is right now, you still have the four after controlled impact because one of your sites didn't burn. So you have, the, you have a time series that was treated with the fire, and a time series that's not, and it's just a super powerful design. And um, and so you kind of left out that way. Okay, so we have um, a couple comments from West River. Um, one is that the uh, satellite platform is the Pleiades with half meter resolution, according to Jamie. And um, Pat is saying that it's three meter resolution. <laughs> and <laughs> approximately 35 AUM. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of saying Jamie is right. <laughs> Do we have any other questions from West River? We have all our speakers working today, um, so you guys can even use your microphones if you want.
Any other questions from the audience? Okay, then let's go ahead and give Dan a round of applause. Thank you. I mean, it looks like.